Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. So in the trees we've been drawing, we've been putting in these little italic T's for trace that stand in the position where items move from, the origin position of, uh, the, of the elements that we've moved around. It's a legitimate question to ask whether this is merely a syntactician's conceit or whether or not there really is evidence that there is an item there that marks the position where something has come from. So let's talk about a little bit of evidence that might suggest that traces are real. The phenomenon comes from uh, the phenomenon we're going to use to argue for this comes from uh, a property of English where you do certain kinds of contraction, or more accurately, where you don't do certain kinds of contraction. So let's look at this contraction that we call wanna contraction, and wanna is a contracted form that you find in spoken English where you take a want, an adjacent infinitival to, and you contract them together. So you can say, who do you want to kiss? And want and to collapse together into wanna. And this sentence, it's perfectly fine to do wanna contraction. The uh, question word we have here that's in the specifier of the CP came from object position. It came from down here as the complement to the verb kiss, where it both got its theta role and its accusative case. But here's an interesting thing. Wanna contraction is not permitted in instances where the trace would originate between the want and the two. So for example, um, in this following sentence, who do you want to kiss the puppy, where the subject of this sentence is kiss the uh, uh, is the who, and it's in it's the subject of the verb kiss, the the who would have to come from between want and to, it will move there because of the extended projection principle. So the the who will have moved from right before kiss to right before to, and um, for the EPP reasons, not not for case, but for um, EPP. Now here's the uh, the puzzle. Uh, this contraction is not permitted. You cannot contract um, when the wh word or originated between the want and the two. Well, one possible explanation for that is because there's a trace there, and so our phonology won't let us contract two onto want when there's a trace there. Even when the trace is null uh, and something you can't hear, we as speakers know that something started there. So um, therefore, we're going to not allow ourselves to uh, collapse and want and to. And in fact, the grammatical way to say the sentence is, who do you want to kiss the puppy? And that's the only grammatical form. Now, let's uh, think carefully about some environments where you might expect um, a lot of contraction. So uh, I'm going to talk about two such environments. One is in the context of singing. So people often contract when they're doing singing because just to make it sort of flow uh, with the tune and the metrics of the song. Another environment where you get lots of contraction is child speech because children um, don't have quite the articulatory ability of adults so they often contract things to make the things easier for themselves. So I'm going to show you now two pieces of evidence, one from music and one from child speech, that show that children know that there is indeed a trace in this environment and that they do not do the expected contraction um, even though you would predict they would. And similarly, singers do not contract in this environment. So we'll start with the singing. The, um, the, uh, the piece of evidence I'm going to draw to your attention comes from the song called Closing Time by Semisonic. And um, 
Uh, for copyright reasons, I can't actually embed that song into this video presentation. I wanted to, but YouTube doesn't like it when I try. So I've uh, just provided the link here. And uh, after I explain the phenomenon, I encourage you to pause this video, uh, go, to this, uh, go to this link, and listen to the song, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, I'll also put this link down in the comments below um, so that you have an opportunity to just click through. So in this song, you have uh, this phrase that shows up in the chorus, I know who I want to take me home. And what's interesting about this case is it is quite clearly articulated as want to. It's not wanna. And you would expect that the singer would contract if they could just because that would make the song flow better. But they don't. He clearly says, I know who I want to take me home. Where he says, want to take me home. He does not say, want to take me home. So this suggests that this singer is keenly aware of the fact that this question word, who here, has started off in between the want and the to, and that there's a trace there blocking the contraction. So pause the video, don't stop it, and go and listen to this song and you'll hear what I mean. Okay, the second place that we talked about where you might expect um, an abundance of contraction um, is in uh, children's speech. And uh, this video that I've linked here, um, and again, the link will be down in the description of the video, uh, so you can click through, was made by the linguist Stephen Crane uh, when he was uh, working with very young children. And uh, it comes from, uh, it's sponsored by the Linguistic Society of America. Now, this in this video, just listen to what I have to say first before you go watch it, you're going to hear three things. First of all, children of this age do a really interesting thing. They actually pronounce the WH words in both their surface position, that is the um, specifier, the TP, and in their deep structure position. So they will say things like, who does Bill love who? And they'll leave the who in both positions. Um, so this is one thing uh, that suggests that, that the kids are aware of the movement relationship. They actually pronounce the word that's, that's moved in both its surface position and its base position. The second thing you'll notice is that they never do this when the WH word would be in between want and to. So they never say, um, who do you want who to leave? Um, they just don't put a who in that position. And furthermore, when they actually say the sentence out loud, they say it without want a contraction. So they say, who do you want to see? With want and to. They, won't, they don't say, who do you want to see? So they do not uh, want to contract in this environment either. So clearly it's the case that even very young children know that this position is a position that's privileged in some way. It's a position from which an item has moved. So go ahead and click um, on the video below and uh, watch this and you'll see what I mean, that um, there, there is perhaps real evidence that, um, that traces exist.